Okay, so I watched this uh, video recently, Paranomics. It was sent to me by one of my subscribers, so I just want to start off by saying thank you. I really enjoyed watching it, and I learned a lot from it. Now, I saw it, and of course I have an opinion for everything, so <laughs> I felt I'm just going to talk about it, or add on to it. Now, I feel Dr. Claude Anderson, he was, he was on the right track, but what I feel we should also do is work on sustainability... Uh, becoming self-sufficient and being careful of becoming exploitive because okay so what do I mean by all these th three th um, things well right now a problem that North America most Western countries is we are what is it let me let me just pull the exact s statistic right now before somebody's like Oh, where do you get your stats from? Shut up. I'm not interested in that. Okay. 20% of, I guess, the global population consume 86% of all goods and services, while the poorest 20% consume just 1.3%. Isn't that scary? But at the same time, if we keep consuming at that rate... It's not sustainable. The environment can't handle it. I mean, we're cutting down rainforests so that cows can graze. It's, it's, it's not practical, and it's hurting us. It's hurting us a lot. Now, another interesting fact I found is almost half of the ex-colonial world dwells now in slums. Now, this gets gets me to the point of we need to be careful not to be exploitive because he did mention okay why don't we sense like the cheapest labor right now is in Haiti so why don't we go to Haiti well yeah I get it it's cheap lab labor but we're trying to bring up the black community as a whole so yes it's cheap labor but let's make it so that they can survive and build up their communities there too uh, I'm not saying he's just like, oh, let's go use and abuse them. But I just want us to keep in mind that these are our brothers and sisters and we shouldn't, they don't deserve to be exploited. We've, we're all a part of the same struggle. Not just that, I don't believe any race sh should be exploited. Like, I don't like what North America has been doing to the Asians, the... Indians, the blacks, just to everyone. They just exploit everyone. And right now, I believe the corporation, the corporation is the new colonial power. I mean, think about it. They go in to these places, extract the resources, bring the wealth back to their mother country, while the people back there are suffering and being paid wages that they can't live off of. And you know what? When they're not allowed to get into unions, if they complain they're fired, they're disposable. So it's ex essentially slave labor. Now, there's slavery on two fronts. Two fronts. We have it back there in Africa where they're being exploited by the corporations. And you have it in America, in the prison system. Now, the way the media presents it is, oh, we have too many criminals. Do you know how much we have to pay in tax dollars to keep them fed and clothed and warm and blah, 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 all the man hours it takes to supervise them? Well, yeah, but do you realize that corporations are selling those products to the prisons that... Um, that it, money is invested into building those prisons so people are being paid off of building the prisons. Did you know that in some prisons they have them work for like five cents an hour and then a part of that money goes back to the state in reparations? So, I don't know. I just find it ridiculous. And I think I heard somewhere, I will find the statistic, but... Well, African Americans, they make up 
twelve percent of the population. But don't they make up like sixty or seventy percent of the prison population? How does that make any sense? I'm not saying black people don't commit crime. I'm just saying that is alarmingly high. But then look at all the other statistics. I mean, that 34% of African Americans are unemployed. That's, that's, it's really sad. So I think we should work on becoming more self-sufficient so that at least, because when these men get out of jail, like, yes, they committed crimes, but not all of them were violent crimes. You also have to look at... When people say, oh, so-and-so was in prison, it almost dehumanizes the person. All of a sudden, they're a monster. But you don't consider the circumstance that put them in there. Maybe these people want to work, want always wanted to work, and to be a productive part of society, but they were became a victim of circumstance. How do we help these people? I think we need to find better ways to rehabilitate these people and integrate them back into society by giving them jobs. Not like jobs at McDonald's, but jobs they can actually survive off of. And maybe we should work to petition to increase minimum wage. But see, that won't be an issue when we own more facets of industry and employ and become self-sufficient. and. Nobody's saying that you have to go to college and get a college degree. Why not learn a, learn a trade? That's very valuable. I mean, we're going to need people working in the agriculture industry because we have some of the worst diets and health issues resulting from our diets. We have the highest level of obesity. We need to fix that. We actually have kids in our community who are malnourished. We are a third world nation in a developed nation. Now, if the government doesn't care, we have to do it ourselves. So let's get involved in agriculture. Let's get involved in the trades. Let's learn how to, um, let's get, get involved in technology. Let's be behind the technology, as he put it, like created instead of being replaced by it. And what else can we do? We can, we've, we've always had skills. We need to learn how to utilize them. And we can't be exploited by the, I mean, people are going to be like, oh, you're racist, but I'm not. At the end of the day, whites and Asians are exploiting the black community when it comes to the hair industry. We need, to, if we're going to spend that kind of money on hair, we need to make sure it's staying in our community. So black people, start learning how to manufacture hair, okay? Let's make that synthetic hair, let's sell it, and let's keep that $9 billion in our community so that we can feed our kids and give them a proper education. My goodness. And okay. Did I already talk about going into third world countries? If I didn't, I'm going to talk about, If I did, I'm going to talk about it again cuz I don't know what to do. Um Yeah. If we're he he mentioned going into Haiti using their labor. Now, a problem that has happened with colonialism and slavery is we've repeated that same mentality. Instead of being the victims, we become the abusers. Okay? I mean, the black people owning slaves? I don't think it's because... I I can't say that they didn't want to, but I think that is a learned behavior. It's like, oh, I'm superior because now I'm like the white man and I, I own slaves. I'm an equal because I'm doing what he's doing. He's going to respect me. If I agree with everything he says, he's going to respect me. So, we don't want to become the weapons of our own destruction. We, don't, we shouldn't be going into Haiti and into Africa saying, oh, there's cheap labor, let's go exploit them. No. At the end of the day, they're our brothers and sisters, and they're going through a similar, if not the same, struggle. Let's work to empower each other. I think that is very, very important. What else can I say? about this video, the Powernomics. I don't know. I think we need to stop denying there's a race problem and that the government doesn't care. 
I mean, because white people all the time, like whenever I talk about race, it's like, are you racist? Are you being racist? Do you not like white people? And it's not that I don't like white people, and but it's, it's almost like they forget that racism still exists. Until you walked a day in my shoes, please don't tell me that racism doesn't exist. I have to deal with it on a daily basis. I mean, I was sitting in class one time with this kid, and... Our parents had virtually the exact same job, the exact same jobs, a similar level of income, and he, and he's just like, oh, well, my parents are better because they're white. And you want to tell me that racism doesn't exist? Like, he has that exact view of me, even though I'm essentially his equal. My parents make the same income, they have the same job. We go to the same school, we're receiving the same quality of an education, and you still tell me I'm your inferior? And, like, even people you don't think are racist, sometimes it just slips out. I remember I was sitting in, in high school, it was around the time Obama got an inaugurated or whatever, and one kid had the nerve to say, well, Obama's more white than black. He's a white man. And I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? What makes you say that? He's like, well, um, he was raised by white people. And I'm like, I know, I know biracial children who are raised by white people, but they will be the first to tell you that when white people look at them, they don't look at them and say, oh, you're my fellow white person. They say that person is black. My friend for a long time, whenever she was... Uh, whenever anybody would refer to her, they or they say, "Oh, there's how many black people or white people on the basketball team?" They'd automatically lump her in the black category. They always say, "Oh, she's half black," or "She's always half black or black," but they never say, "Oh, you're half white." Oh, you're white. They never do that. So you don't think he experienced racism? Especially when there's some people still in this world who have the one drop mentality. Look at my other videos. I mean, I'm all about multiculturalism. I love people of different races. Look at my friends. I have one friend who's sh from Sri Lanka. Like, this is just my immediate circle of friends. My one friend is Mexican. I have another friend who's white. In high school, I had a lot of Asian friends. I have black friends, African friends. I, I pretty much have a friend from every single race. And I like that because I like learning things from different people. But I don't like putting a value on people just based on their race. And I find that as a black person, that's what people do to me. So let's stop denying there's a problem. Let's work together to fix it and make the situation better for ourselves so that we can compete. So that, not that, how can I put it? We're not doing it for them. We're not doing it because we have anything to prove to them. We need to do this for us, for our kids, for the next generations to come. Because if we continue on this self-destructive path, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? If you think it's hard to get a job now because of the stereotypes, my goodness. I, I'm scared for us, to be honest. Unless we change, unless we change... I mean, it's been ingrained in us, but we need to change. And we can't wait around for somebody to, to lead us, to guide us. People, let's just, come on, let's get together. Let's take initiative. Let's take initiative. In the next two years, I plan to go down to the United States. And you know what? You know what? I'm going to marry a farmer, and we're going to have a farm, and we're going to sell <laughs> food. And you know what? I'm going to reform the prison system because I'm setting goals for myself. They're, ambi they're ambitious, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I have to do it. We have to do this.